Hi book dragons, I'm here to film another bookmas video for you and it's 24 books coming out in 24 that I will definitely read. This is also the books that I think coming out in 2024 that I will probably give five stars to and so this will be like my five star prediction reads for 2024 and then we can go back at the end of the year and see if these 24 books were five stars. And I will tell you why I think that they're going to be five stars as well. There is a range. They're not all YA fantasy, but a lot of them are just because that's what I normally read or what I tend to give the highest ratings to. Um, and again, these dates may change. They always do. Sometimes they do. But I will give you the dates that I found on Goodreads. So um, the first book we are going to check chat about is Heart of the World by Amy Kaufman. This is the sequel to Isles of the Gods. It is coming out in July and I am so freaking pumped for this book. Here is the beautiful cover that just got released. I adored Isles of the Gods. You'll have to watch my best books of the years for more information on that. But I loved it. I thought it was so well crafted. It had a lot of elements that worked for me. It was these, you know, these four characters, these three characters are kind of forced to work together and they don't really like each other. There's definitely a love to hate romance. There is weight sleeping gods. There is a quest and it really, really worked for me. I devoured it. I really, really need to reread it. I kept putting it off because I was like, oh, and I had the audiobook too, and Amy Kaufman. I was following her podcast that she was doing with KJ Armstrong, which was another woman on this list that I also really, really loved. I hope that podcast comes back, but I know Amy Kaufman has been having some really, really bad vision issues and having really, really bad migraines, so I don't know if they're going to do the podcast anymore, but I do love it. Um, so yeah. That is coming out in July, and if I had to pick a book that I think could probably top my list, it would probably be that one because I adore Isles of the Gods. Um, the next book that's coming out is the sister book to Amy Kaufman. It is Firebirds by K.J. Armstrong, the author that wrote Nightbirds, that also does that podcast, Pub Dates. If I remember, I will try to link it, but they had a whole episode kind of introducing us to their books before they came out, and it really, really worked for me. Um, this book, I think, is coming out in August. It wasn't the date on Goodreads, but I'm pretty sure in Kate's Instagram post it said August. There's not even a cover, but these are girls that can gift magic with a kiss, and they start to realize that the foundation of their world is starting to crumble. Um, it has 1920s-esque. It has um, an LGBTQ plus relationship, which I really, really enjoyed. It had some disability rep, and four really, really different girls, and I really, really loved it. So I really hope, I'm really excited to read this one and wrap up another series, but I really liked Nightbirds. Um, and then another author duo, that, another author, author duo that you'll see twice on this list is Eris Takes All by Emily Eberle and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is another one of their YA books, but it's a bit of a twist. It's not what they normally do, so I'm really excited when authors kind of branch out a little bit. And it is called Eris Takes All. It's coming out in June. Here is the cover. This, I'm just going to read you guys like the, the tagline. Inheritance Game meets Ocean Eleven, this thrilling YA adventure about a teenager determined to pull off the perfect heist in the middle of her father's wedding. I'm here. I love Inheritance Game and I also love romances, so this will work for me. And I have been trying to find like a book like Inheritance Game and I haven't had much luck, so maybe this one will be do it, but I love their writing style quite a bit. And just a reminder, that comes out in June and I really like that cover. Um, and the next book is another sequel on this list, is Royal Scandal by Amy Carter. This book comes out in March and I will have a photo here. And this is a book that is the sequel to Royal Blood, and it's one an American person is the illegitimate daughter of the king, and book one there was a murder and scandals, and she was kind of forced to live with them. I'm really excited to see where book two goes. Like, it, book one was a wild, fun ride, and I am really excited. Um, I haven't read anything else by Amy Carter, but this one, this series just worked for me. It, gave, it really... It gave me like Harry and Meghan vibes, like how the pub, the, how the royal family treats each other, and I just was very intrigued. So I really am excited to read that one. And again, it comes out in March. Um, here's a couple of books that are like really early on in the year, which means I should be able to like get them 
do them pretty quickly. That's always the hope. One is A Fragile Enchantment by Allison Sapp. It's coming out in January. I'm 90% sure this is one of the book boxes I'm getting, so I do have an ERC, but I will probably wait to read my, well, I probably shouldn't wait to read my physical copy, but I definitely will wait until like January 1st so I can count it on those lists. I don't really love to read 2024 books in 2023 because then I really can't put them on any lists, but it may get read early, early in the year because I do have an ERC. I would love to check off my list. Um, it's a romantic fantasy of matters from New York Times bestselling author. A magical dressmaker commissioned for a royal wedding finds herself embroiled in a scandal when a gossip college draws attention to her unfamiliar chemistry with the groom. Ooh, that is intriguing. And I love Regency romances. That is like my secret pleasure. I really, I struggle sometimes with pure romance. Like I've always said that. And it has to be an author that I think has a nice balance. But I love Regency stuff. So if you have like a YA book that has Regency vibes, I'm going to be here for it. And that comes out in January. That was the cover. If I didn't show you the cover, I'll show it to you again. But yeah, let's move on. Um, the next book I'm going to talk about is Morgan Matz. It has two books coming out this year. Prom Chanted is her Disney imprint book, which I really do want to read. I actually have an arc of that. Um, but this is her first book in, like, the YA space, the pure YA space with Simon, Simon Pulse that she's written it in, like, a while. It's called The Ballad of Darcy and Russell. And here's the photo. It comes out in May. And uh, I, don't, I don't want to read the summary because I think it kind of like gives it away. But I think it's about these two characters that wind up meeting in there. One girl doesn't believe in fate, but their romance may be written in the fate cards. Um, and I think they have to decide if this small time is worth saying hello or saying goodbye to each other, which I'm really intrigued. I really do like Morgan Matson's writing style. Her books always have a nice balance of friendship and romance. I think that her last book, the one in this, in where, where, where the, uh, I don't remember the name of it. It had a lot more friendship dynamics and like less romance. So I hope this book has a nicer balance, but I really did like that one as well. Um, and again, this one comes out in May. The first adult fantasy book to make this list is The Honey Witch and it comes out in May. I do have a New York of this. It may get read a little bit early, we will see. Um, but it is The Honey Witch can never find love. This is her curse, but when a young woman doesn't believe in magic, or as her island sparks fly in the socially sweet novel of magic, hope, and overcoming all. Ooh, that sounds like it's going to be sapphic, which I'm here for. So yeah, that one sounds really, really cool. It comes out in May. Here is the really, really pretty cover. I saw this and I was like, oh my goodness, I need this book. And here it is. Coming out in July, I think, is a little bit early for her, is The Grandest Game by Jennifer Lynn Barnes. This is the second book in the second series. Um, the Brothers Hawthorne was the first book. I really like that book. I will talk more about that in my surprises because I was really nervous for that book, and I'll tell you why. But I really, really like Jennifer Lynn Barnes' writing style. She does such well-crafted mysteries and like really really good long games so i'm excited to see where the grandest game goes and it comes out in oh my god it comes out in july and here is this pretty photo this cover just got released another book that i'm really excited for coming out in September. This is like the, the, one of the latest books on my list. Is a witch, a witch's guide to magical innkeeping by Sandu Magdara, who wrote. Oh, I can't remember the name. It was the I can't remember the name, but I liked his other book like quite a bit. It was about the girl that she like wound up having to, you know, sh um, mentor and educate these young witches. Oh my god, I can't remember the name of the book. But this one is coming out in September, and um. Oh, it's from the from the author of, of, the, of the Various Secret Society of Irregular Witches, which I really, really love. There's no summary, but it has to do magical innkeeping. I'm here for it. It comes out in September. Here is this really, really pretty cover. I saw this. I was like, oh my god, I need to add it to my list. But here it is. 
Another YA contemporary coming out is Wild About You um, by Caitlin Hill. It is coming out in May. It's two total opposites, one race around the outdoors in this grumpy sunshine teen romance you author love from scratch. The trail of true love doesn't always come with a map. And I like books about the outdoors. I tend to read them in the summer. I really do love a YA contemporary. I just have to pick them up more. That's really my problem. Because they're a nice like palate cleanser. Um, and then I could pass them on to my students, which is what I normally try to do. But yeah, this one comes out in May. Here's the cover just got released. The book I'm going to come out, coming out in August is Kisses, Codes, and Conspiracies by Abigail Hain Wen. It comes out in August. Um, and again, it has to do with a heist, a conspiracy, a complicated babysitting assignment. And I'm intrigued. I love when, you know what romance books adds a hint of mystery and had a bit of suspense because those books definitely keep me guessing and I haven't seen it a lot in the YA genre so I'm happy that people are kind of taking that plunge and that's becoming a trend so yeah sorry if my voice sounds horrible I went to a holiday party last night and I talked a lot at work so I apologize but yeah here is the cover and it is coming out in August And then this is when I kind of went back to my 2023 readings and kind of picked books that I think I have will probably give five stars to. And one is a novel love story by Ashley Poston. It's coming out in June. Here is the cover of that. Um, and it doesn't really say a lot. It's a professional literature finds yourself caught up in a world of fiction, literally. So I think maybe either she goes into the world of the book or the book comes into her world which I'm intrigued by that one sounds fun and I like her writing style it always has a bit of a magic twist to it that normally super works for me um and the next book I'm gonna try to go does not have a cover yet but it is Ashes of You by Catherine Cowles it is the final book I think in the Lost and Found series this is Lawson's book and I think he's a single dad he's the last one you're waiting for to get his happily ever after and I'm pretty sure it's a nanny romance, but I could be wrong. We don't have a cover. It's coming out in February. But this is where my love of, like, romantic suspense comes from because I've been reading a lot of small town romans, especially Catherine Cowell's. Um, and, yeah, so I'm excited for that one. And, again, it comes out in February, but we don't have a cover yet. I'm putting this book on this list in hopes that I loved it because I thought – Dial A for Andy's were so cute. I really dislike the second book in the in the series. I thought that it was very, very rushed. The romance was at the forefront. The cozy mystery kind of took over the story. But The Good, The Bad, and The Andes is coming out from Jesse Q. Suchanto's in March. Um, and I think it's like a Lunar New Year story that has a mystery element to it. Um, and yeah, I'm excited for this one. I hope I love it. I really liked book one and I want to recapture that magic. Um, but it comes out in March and here is the cover. Another January release is The Breakup Tour by Emily Weberly and Austin Sigmund Broca. This is their adult book. Um, and it is a rising star musician who has a second chance at love with her old flame. She remembers all too well from the Sweeney romance. And I love Second Chance Romance. It's definitely my favorite, and they normally write Second Chance or Marriage in Trouble in really everything that they write is kept for the YA books, and I'm so excited. So hopefully I get around to reading this one soon. It comes out in January. I will attach a photo here. It's a really, really pretty cover as well. Um, and hopefully, I really, really like it, but yeah, it comes out in January, so it should be easy to check off my checklist. Next book we're going to talk about is the final book in the Love Life Farm series by B.K. Borison. I binged this series this year and I loved it and it comes out in June and it's two opposites. We'll find out if a one night thing together is enough to get to each other's eye systems in the final book in the beloved Love Life Farm series. So I'm excited. I love this small town farm, <laughs> small town farm, small town vibes. There's a Christmas tree farm on this book. That's why I said farm. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm really excited to see how this series wraps up and to see all the characters again. Um, it may become a new favorite. Right now, if I had to say my favorite, it was definitely probably Love Life Farms. It just had so many vibes, but I also really liked all the other books in the series. Um, but yeah, it comes out in June, and here is the cover.
And then we have another author that's making her way into adult books and it is The Breakup Pack by Emma Lord. This book's coming out in August and it is two best friends who haven't spoken in years pretend to date after a breakup with their respective exes go viral in this delightful new deeply emotional new novel from Emma Lord. I'm really excited for this one. I love second chance romances. They are like my favorite. I really sometimes struggle with hate to more. The only time hate to more works is if there's tension between you and your ex because then there is like the, but there's history. But I struggle with hate to more. I really, really do. So this one sounds intriguing. I'm excited. It comes out in June. Yes, June. Yes. Oh no, sorry. It comes out in August. And here's the really, really pretty cover. Just got released. This last book is by an author that I have read before, and it is um, Destroy the Day by Bridget Kimmerer. It, it's not, if it's not the final book, it's getting there. It's the third book in the um, Defy the Night series, and I really like this series. I really have to go read the other series that I haven't read yet, but this one I really, really do like. It has a pandemic vibe to it. Um, it has a prince and a person that's like like a rebel, and they're in a they're, they kind of force themselves into a dynamic in a relationship, and I really am excited for this one. It comes out in January, so I have no excuses not to read it because I am fully caught up, and I'm really excited for it. Here is the pretty cover. I have to work on pre-ordering that because I'm not going to get it, obviously, in any book, book boxes because it's the third book in the series. But yeah, it comes out in January, and I'm really excited for it. couple are just some YA fantasy books that sound really really good. Um, I'll give you guys the date and the names and if I know anything about it. Um, the first one is To Gaze Upon Wicked Gods by Emily Park, or Emily Chan I think. I will attach a photo here. It's coming out in April. Here's the photo. Um, a young woman is cursed with the power of death and must decide between saving her family and betraying her country. Ooh. The cover is stunning, as you just saw, and I think I'm 90% positive this is one of the authors that was affected by the Crown of Starlight fiasco, so I would like to support her as soon as I can. Um, so yeah, that is what I'll be doing for this review, because that was horrible. Um, yeah, comes out in April. Um, and the next book we're going to talk about is another author that was affected by that controversy, The Poisons That We Drank. It's coming out in... March. Here's the photo. Another stunning cover, by the way. In a country divided by humans and witches, Ben Newstone Heart Hustles is brew making illegal love potions to support her family, which, ooh, I love the, the, the legality of everything. And it is coming out in March. So I will keep you posted on that one because I would really, really like to read it as well. Um, another March book we have is The Hedge Witch of Box Hall is coming out in March by, um, Al I think it's, I I'll attach a photo here. It's a pretty cover. There's a little fox on it. Here you go. I think it's Anna Bright. And it's a standalone romanticy. It is a rebellious witch undertakes a luscious quest to restore magic to the medieval whales as two princes vie for her heart. That sounds amazing, and it comes out in March, and I love this cover, so I'm really excited for it. And yeah, hopefully I'll get to read it next year. I definitely will have to, because it sounds perfect for me. That I do have, I just am a lazy to go get it, is A Drop of Venom. This is Rick Riordan Presents, their second YA book, but it's a Medusa retelling, and it is um, Circo's YA, and this unapologetic feminist retelling of Medusa and Mischief in the mythology. And it's an epic fantasy to the Rick Ryan present imprint. I'm really excited for this one. Here is a photo. It comes out in January. I have no excuse not to read it immediately. This is a grumpy sunshine YA comedy and coming of age story about taking up space in a world and turning, learning what it means to let others in. So yeah, I'm really excited. I love like Shakespeare retellings. They're so much fun. Um, and the last book on this end, I will attach a photo or if I didn't attach a photo, I'll attach it here. Last book on this list is Once a Queen in January. It is an American teen discovers her estranged English grandmother was once a queen in another world in this debut novel from author and speaker, Sarah Author. And here is the photo of that.
Those are the 24 bucks that I think I'm gonna love in 2024. I would love to hear if I've missed any. If you think any 24, 24 bucks, I will probably love. I will probably love more than 24 to 2024 bucks, but these are ones that just piqued my interest and I definitely wanna get to. I would love to hear your lists below and I'll talk to you guys soon for my next video.